We just saw Into the Woods, and on this show, I take my friends, we go see a movie, we review it in the car, and then we have a discussion. The review part is spoiler-free, so if you're on the fence or looking for a recommendation, you can watch that part and find out if this is a movie we recommend. Uh, if you have already seen the movie or just want to hear everything we thought and don't care about spoilers, watch the whole thing, because we'll get into a, a much deeper discussion after the cutoff point. Um... So I didn't know much about this movie, um, or, you know, I hadn't seen the musical beforehand. Um, I was a bit worried about it um, a few months back, uh, because the trailers that I had seen didn't have any singing or musical parts to them. Um, you know, the I Wish trailers that they were doing for quite a while. And then about a month ago, they started showing people singing, and it looked a little bit better. Um, and I was a little concerned about they revealed what Johnny Depp's wolf was going to look like, and I was kind of worried about that. But it's actually a great movie, um, and the musical is, is the musical aspect of it is, is good. Um, it's entertaining, it's funny, um, there's a lot to enjoy about it. Uh, so it's on a very short list of movies that I would recommend uh, to just about anybody see, um, you know, along with things like Guardians of the Galaxy, the Lego movie, uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Um, just movies that, you know, at any age, um, just about any any audience would enjoy. Um, unless you hate musicals or, you know, if, if two hours is a little on the long side, I know there's probably some, um, some younger kids that might need to see it in two sittings. Um, that sort of thing, but it was great to see it in the theater. Um, we saw it in a completely crowded, ma uh, massive screen, um, uh, because we're here on, uh, Christmas Day, opening day, and, uh, it was a, it was a great experience. Um, I was happy that they didn't go too crazy on CG, you know, it's not like they didn't go the Maleficent route with, um, spending millions of dollars on CG stuff that got boring after a while. Um, I do feel like the last act of it kind of dragged, and it dragged almost for a good reason, because they they did a really good job of establishing the world that the movie takes place in and not deviating from it. Um, so there's not a huge climax, there's just sort of a, you know, a resolution to the story uh, that's very satisfying. And even that, I I've, I've, have heard now that is that's even a bit more abrupt than the way that the musical does it, but I think in terms of a film adaptation, I think this is this was the right choice to make. So, um, again, really great. Um, really enjoyed it as, as all of those things go. Um, if you're sitting at home thinking, should I go see this or should I go see Annie? Just stop thinking about it. You're going to go to this. Um, Annie's terrible. This is a good movie. Um, so anyway, that's my review. Um, I, I highly recommend it. What did you guys think? Uh, I was a big fan. Uh, I have seen the stage musical. It's probably one of my favorite stage musicals of all time. And so there was very little chance that as long as it was even somewhat faithful adaptation that I, I wasn't going to like it. So I knew going in I was probably going to like it, and I did. Um, we'll get into more in the spoilers on things that have changed and things haven't changed for those of you. Maybe we'll do that like at the very, very end. So those of you who have never seen the stage musical can just not watch that. But those of you who are interested, we'll talk a little bit about that. But um, I will say that I thought that uh, there were a few parts where just the fact that it started off as a stage musical and it ended in a movie, that maybe that's going to hurt it with some members of the audience. Mm -hmm. um, without going into spoilers, what I'll say is that there's a lot of action that happens off stage, And this is not like a... Chicago musical where they just kind of like the songs don't really impart a lot of information They just they're more about feelings and emotions like there's a lot of like factual information that's shared within the songs here that And the stage somebody is telling you about what happened off stage that they just can't show you in the movie They have that same song and maybe they'll have like a little snippet of a flashback as they're singing but not much Yeah, uh, didn't bother me a whole lot, but I could see where some people and this kind of goes to Dale's point about not going CGI crazy. Some people who are used to the CGI crazy movies, the Guardians of the Galaxies or the Maleficents or whatever the case may be, they're going to be like, well, that did they just have no special effects budget? This is a Disney movie. What, what's going on here? Yeah. Didn't bother me, but if that's something that you may not like, that's possibly something that you wouldn't like in this. Um, but overall, I thought it was really good. It uh, It's one of the first movies in a long time I remember 
pretty large portion of the audience was applauding at the end. There was at least mm-hmm. one song, um, the song that the two princes sing, um, where there was at least a little applause in the audience after the song itself was yeah, over. Yeah, that was a hit. Yeah, that was very <laughs> funny. Uh, Christopher Pine was just freaking fantastic in this movie. He was mm-hmm. so funny. Um, Meryl Streep was really good. There, she has a song uh, probably about three quarters of the way through and I thought she was good throughout but I wasn't like oh she's just blowing it away but then she has her very last song in the movie um, or the very last song that you kind of like see her character singing um, I just thought she just blew that one away mm-hmm. um, and I just thought overall Anna Kendrick uh, Emily Blunt everybody was really did a really good job in it um, I will say that I thought that a little bit of a waste of Tracy Ullman and particularly Christine Baranski if I, if I pronounce that right. Mm-hmm. Um, they were good in their roles, but it was kind of like, you could see them doing so much more with those roles. That they, with, for Christine Bransky, it was particularly because her small her part was so small. For yeah. Tracy Ullman, she had a bigger part, and I just felt like I've seen Tracy Ullman, I feel like she could chew the scenery here a little bit more, and she wasn't doing that. Mm-hmm. But, but my, my I recommend it. I thought it was really good. Okay. I was oddly very neutral about the movie, yeah. I, and I'm not sure why, because I usually I enjoy musicals. There's, I haven't seen this musical, but I expected mm-hmm. to enjoy it. But I, I found myself looking at my watch a lot because I was just kind of bored. Yeah, and I'm I'm, I'm I'm having a really hard time like nailing down why because I can nail down some specific things I I, I definitely enjoyed, like. I think my favorite part by far was the two Prince songs, and then pretty much any scene with Chris Pine. I, I, I could watch a movie just yeah. about his character. I mean, were there characters that you just didn't care about? Is that part of the thing for Probably you? Probably a lot of them in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just didn't, for the most I can, part. And, I can see that. And I think maybe part of that is just because they're taking four or five different fairy tales mm-hmm. and mashing them into one. and So maybe part of it is that, that there's just not enough focus on anybody for me. But right. I just, like, I'm, I'm not... Like I didn't, I didn't hate it or really dislike it. Like I think I would, I would probably watch it again after some time has passed. Yeah, but yeah, I could totally was, get that. And I think, I mean, part of it too is that, like on the one hand, it's cool the way that they're merging all of the fairy tales yeah, together. Yeah, and I really enjoy that idea. Uh, and the way that they, like, there's not necessarily a like evil force that's going against the 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 characters. It's like there's the baker and his wife, and they're like just by nature of what they're doing, making things. But um, it's also something where they throw out a lot of character development for, you know... Expediency. It's it's just Little Red Riding Hood. You know about Little Red Riding Hood. And that's true, yeah. And I thought it was, to that point, I thought it was kind of an oddly paced movie. Um, And particularly, I think, if you went in not knowing what the movie was like, not knowing what the structure of the movie was, and I I will avoid major spoilers here, but the... But... um, but I mean, I knew because I'd seen it before, and I don't know if you guys knew or not. But basically, the first act of the stage musical—it's the traditional telling of these fairy, maybe not traditional telling, but a fairly keeping to the main points of these yeah. fairy tales. Mm-hmm. Um, that's through the, throughout the first act. The second act is a totally new story, like what happens after they get their happily ever after. So that, and it's not like fifty-fifty. It's maybe the first two thirds of the movie is that representation of mm-hmm. their normal story, and the last third is what happens the bad things that happen afterwards Mm -hmm. but even within that first act structure like that first two thirds it's still a little bit off because there's one fairy tale i won't say which one but one fairy tale that basically that entire story is told within the first 20 minutes yeah Yeah, and then the the others the other fairy tales they basically they run the full course of like the first two thirds of the movie Mm -hmm. and then after that i mean i could imagine i was sitting there thinking boy you know if i were a parent taking my kid to this movie and maybe you felt the same way i don't know jeremiah and i didn't know how this movie worked, I would say, oh, well, you know, this is where it's, this is where the Cinderella story ends, or this is where the Jack and the Beanstalk movie ends. There's five minutes left of this movie and there's another 35 minutes. Yeah. And I felt that too. And that's what I was kind of getting at with the, the climax doesn't wow you because sure. That could have been the end of the movie. I was, I knew there was going to be more to it than that. Um, and there's not like, it's not like there's a crazy amount more than that, but there is like another, There's another act, essentially. There's another, you know... And it's an act that really kind of grounds the movie, I think. I mean, what what happens to them there and and sort of the the lessons they learn, um, they, it, basically, it's sort of like, okay, it 
puts everything that happened before them in a different light. It's like, well, maybe they shouldn't have done those things that they did, and maybe it's not always good to get your wish. It won't get too thematic here, but yeah. But I mean, but I mean, I think it would if if somebody were just to cut it off at the first act, not only would you have different plot points missing, but you would have a very different thematic movie. Right, and I think I think if people go into the if they go to the movie with the expectation that it's it doesn't have a fantastical climax. It doesn't have. Um, it, it's not even a, like it's not even a particularly humorous climax. It's more of like what kind of what you say, like a realistic mm-hmm. sort of uh, depiction, which you know, in a Disney film, is downright dark. Yeah, like that's mm-hmm. that's, yeah. that's 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 the the crazy thing about it is that you know, being sort of a a rooted. Mm-hmm. Uh, normal feeling ending yeah. you know normal feeling uh uh solution or, or resolution like that it, it does make it seem a bit dark and you know it fades out and shows the end of the woods and the audience is like okay <laughs> clap they, they did clap though i mean i don't feel like the clap clapping was forced i mean it wasn't forced but it was there was like a, a sense of is oh it, i guess it's yeah. all right then yeah. um so anyway that's the review section. We're going to get into spoilers here in a second, um, but definitely go check the movie out. Um, don't let us ruin any of the spoilers, especially if you don't know anything about the story, if you hadn't seen the musical before, if you hadn't seen the, uh, um, you know, the story. Or if, if you don't know the story of Cinderella and you don't know how that turns out, then yeah, you don't want to. Just kidding. I think yeah, the story of Cinderella. doesn't go anything like the story of Cinderella. I mean, there are, there are similar characters, but yeah, it's, it's different. So, um, you know, I I guess the major I get I mean we talked a little bit about this, but I guess the major divergence from the musical is that um, the Rapunzel character survives in the movie. Um, that happens pretty like it happens maybe half an hour before the end. Yeah, I mean I thought the first act of the movie translated pretty well from the stage musical. I didn't really notice a lot of changes. The second act felt a little bit. It felt just choppy in general, not horribly so, but it felt like, and it's been a while since I've seen the stage musical, but it felt like there was more chopped out. I thought in particular, the big thing to me was in the stage musical, Rapunzel dies, she possibly commits suicide. It's a little bit iffy. She's kind of crazy. But she's kind of crazy. And yeah, and she's much, she's more normal. She, yeah, she's much more normal. And then she just kind of rides off into the sunset with her prince, which, you know what? It's a Disney movie. It is a Disney princess. Um, they have a lot invested in Disney princesses. I think I would have preferred the choice to have that character die, even if it is suicide, but I also think that this is Disney fronting a lot of money for this movie. There was really no chance they were going to kill you. They were going to kill that character off, and if it was a choice between no movie or a movie that is otherwise well done but does not have that particular plot point for, even though it's Rapunzel and she's, you know, star of the movie Tangled, she's not the main character of this by any stretch of the imagination. No, and I I really don't, like... I went. I mean, I knew. I knew that they. I knew that much. I knew that spoiler that she didn't die and that she did in the musical. I like. I knew that much going into this. But there's enough major. Like, there's more. There's characters you care about more in this movie. Yeah. That oh die. yeah. Yeah, and they still die in the movie. And so I don't know that it was really a decision that you know it's a because she has the same name as a Disney princess. Right. I mean, she's not the. Tangled Rapunzel. She's right. a different character. Right. Um, by but the I, same token, that Anna Kendrick is not the Disney Cinderella. Yeah, but I think I mean I, th- from my perspective, I think because there was one other. Actually, there are a few other changes, but the one other change, like from a plot perspective, that that I saw in there was that was it's much smaller. But in the stage musical, um, Cinderella lives as she does in the movie with her step stepmother and two stepsisters. She also lives with her father in the stage musical who's still alive and basically is an alcoholic who treats her like crap all the time. He's basically the stepmother is mean to her and the father just kind of like whatever. And that character was totally cut out here. It could have just been cut out for time, but they didn't really cut other characters out for time. I feel like that was like you know, that's a Disney princess and her kind of thing has always been that her parents are dead. Um, giving Cinderella a alcoholic, disdainful father is a very different kind of Cinderella than a Cinderella whose both of her parents are dead and she's just been left with a stepmother. So I feel like that was kind of another like Disney princess. Yeah. You know. And again, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, I think 
if if you take Disney's name off of this and you see a film where they make the same choices, mm-hmm. it's really to me it's more about streamlining it. And there's mm-hmm. so many characters in this movie already that like the character like Rapunzel's not a character that we care about in this yeah. movie. Um, the other prince is such a side ancillary mm-hmm. unnecessary character. Um, but there was I mean I mean I will say this there was one basically what happens to the princes in the stage musical um, Rapunzel dies uh, and then the two princes they have this great song in the first act they do a different version of that same song in the second act but it's about in this first act it's about how one of them wants to find Cinderella and one of them wants to be with Rapunzel in the second act one of them finds Snow White and one of them finds Sleeping Beauty and they are in love with these now these women now Um, (laughs) and that the first version of that song was such a crowd pleaser, and mm-hmm. I think they had to know it would be that for them to make that intentional choice that they would do things so that that song could not come up again. That would be that would very likely have the audience rolling even more than they did the first time. I feel like there was a little bit of intentional tinkering from you know Big Mickey Mouse there, and there weren't a lot of other plot changes besides those two with the princesses there. Yeah, but again, I mean, it's it's a. I mean, I would argue, I would if 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 they had brought that back, like if they had done it mm-hmm. like in the musical and they'd brought that back and they'd mm-hmm. had that second song, I would have said it was funny the first time. Because mm-hmm. again, in a film, it's a different. Yeah, it's that's a different true. Thing. That's true. That's true. It's just I, and and I know they need to do some streamlining. I just, I didn't notice a lot of streamlining there, um, except in just some very specific things that I think will hurt their Disney princess brand, which they, they have a lot of money invested in. Yeah. But, I, yeah. And I, I don't, I honestly don't think that Disney or children will, I mean, yes, it has, it, it's a movie that's made by Disney. Um, did we even, did it even have the Disney, like, Opening CG on it, I don't remember seeing well, it had that. The, it had the castle, but it was like a quick. I mean, it looked the same that I was. Looked the same as you know. Okay, so I mean, anyway, it, it's not like, like there aren't going to be like, into the woods dolls. Like yeah, I don't, no, I, I, I wouldn't expect. I mean, it's it's very you know, it's sort of like, if Disney did Wicked, like they yeah. wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, but, but I mean, I just I I watch. Uh, like the TV show Once Upon a Time, which possibly would never have happened if it had had not been for Into the Woods, I'm guessing. But um, but a lot of the things that they do on that show, because Disney owns ABC, which airs that show, it, it's very much influenced by the Disney movies. It's like that's not that's not the original Grimm version of Cinderella. That is the Disney version of Cinderella. Yeah. That is not the original Grimm version of Beauty and the Beast. That is the Disney version of Beauty and the Beast. So I. And I'm not saying it's bad by any stretch of the imagination. But that's that's I don't know. We, we probably will just have to agree yeah, to disagree on yeah, that. Yeah, and point. I and I don't feel that this was nearly as uh, as Disneyfied. I would say as once no, upon a time it, is. I don't think it was Disneyfied at all. I just think there were a few choices they made to not make it totally undisneyfied. Yeah, that's and once upon a time is like they've taken the the stories that you know and they've made like a PG-13 soap opera out right. of them. Like, that's right. that's kind of what Once Upon a Time does, which is a fun concept. Yeah. Um, they just don't seem to, like... It just seems to be like they're just adding things to add things, and yeah. another season after another season, it's just kind of an insane storyline at this point. But And uh, I will say, before we move off of, like, what's changed, just if those people who have seen the stage musical are here, the only other thing I'll say is that there are a few songs that have been cut, and perhaps it's your favorite song. I'm sorry if that's the case, but um, not all of them. Most of the ones that are cut are these songs where the characters come out and speak directly to the audience what and share, learned. like, some word of wisdom that they've learned, yeah. which really doesn't make sense in a movie. And so I was fine that they cut that. I mean, yeah. some of them are fun songs, but what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, they they could have done that over the credits. I think that would have taken away a little bit. I mean, yeah. it's... I mean, it happened, it happened like, three or four times throughout the state. I mean, they do it in the first act, yeah. second act. Yeah. I mean, we... We, we talk about this all the time, you know, whether it's it's something from a comic book or something from a novel or something like that. Like, there's times where people make faithful adaptations, and there's times where people make too faithful adaptations. Sure. Um, you know, when we were when we were watching Snowpiercer earlier this year, it's like this movie is 
a comic book that they made into a movie. Like, it doesn't feel like it was adapted. Mm -hmm. It feels like they took pages, like, it's episodic. Sure. Things that make sense for 20 minutes stop making sense, um, and they don't seem to care, and they just move on, and, you know, you feel like, oh, I should put this issue down and, you know, yeah. pick up the next one. So, yeah, it... I, I can see all of that, um, and it, yeah, I think a lot of people were concerned um, that it it would have too much of the the Disney hand in it. But I think it's I think it's still uh, I mean the story's fairly dark. Um, there's they did a lot of of things to change uh, the characters. They don't you know they don't completely resemble the the Disney counterparts. Right. They do not. Um, so yeah, I, I, I appreciated all of that. Um, as far as the performances and things like that, talking about, you know, um, how utilized people were, um, you know, I, yeah, I've seen Tracy Ullman do other things too. I've also seen people sort of use Tracy Ullman, um, in the other direction, kind of the wrong way, um, where they make her like a comedic foil character and then with the amount of screen time that she has in this movie it would feel like this really weird out of place thing when she right. was in the scenes um similar with like you know tracy ullman could have easily played uh meryl streep's character in this sure. but then you wouldn't it she wouldn't work quite as well when you get to the dramatic side yeah because again like the funnier she would she would have been a funnier witch and a less impactful um, dramatic right. version, um, <clears throat> the, and uh, yeah, Christine Baranski I thought was fine. Um, she was fine. I mean, it was just a small role, and there wasn't. It's like when I watched her, even though I know the character didn't have a big part, I was like, I could watch a whole movie about this character. She's hysterical. But. Yeah, and I don't know that a lot of people even. I mean, I, I know who Christine Baranski is, but I don't know that a lot of people would be able, like even watching the movie would be able yeah. to say, oh, that's Christine Baranski. She's a woman who any movie adaptation of a musical gets a small hysterical role, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago, Mamma Mia, Into the Woods. Yeah. Well, she's on... Uh, and she's on The Good Wife. The Good Wife, yeah. That's um, one of the thing most people have seen her on. Two of the performances, and maybe this is, again, comparing it to the stage musical, but Little Red Riding Hood and Jack and the Beanstalk were both played by... Children, basically, which in the um, in the stage show, at least the one I've seen and the one that's out there that like you can get on video on demand, they are played by like young, young adults. adults who are kind of like they're probably playing a f they're probably playing characters who are a few years older than the ones in this movie, but they're de but the actor and actress are definitely older, mm -hmm. and there's definitely something a little bit with Jack, but particularly with Little Red Riding Hood, that's much more sexual about the encounters, like the wolf song. When yeah, that was a little at, creepy. Yeah, I mean, in this in this version, it's it was creepy because of the words he sang and the way he did it. But it's per, because she's so young. But it, they they really play up the creepiness in the Broadway show. In fact, in the Broadway show, the wolf does not have this zoot suit that Johnny Depp is wearing, which I thought was kind of stupid in the movie. The wolf actually has a naked wolf costume uh, with an um, articulated penis on it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder why they cut that for the movie. I don't know. <laughs> Weird. They didn't literally cut it. No. It wasn't there to begin with. <laughs> and that was dirtier than anything in this movie, so if you're taking your kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, they, they made changes to adapt it, and, I mean, it's a... Yeah, it's not a musical design for, for kids, but... Um, Although there were a lot of kids there. I was happy that Johnny Depp had a relatively small role. Yeah, I was too. I, yeah. I, I've had people say to me... Um, yeah, the trailers make it look like maybe he's going to be... He, he's got a huge part in the trailers, but I've had people say to me, oh, I don't think I want to see that. Johnny Depp again, I was like, no, no. If it's anything like the stage show, then don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not like... And he actually did fine with it, I thought. I just thought that the way that they did his character up was... I didn't want to see a whole movie about him, but no, I thought no. that for the little bit he was in, he was fine. Yeah. And the way they did his character up, it's like it wasn't a wolf. It was like a 1940s gangster with whiskers and a tail <laughs> yeah i mean and it's it's weird because the the main characters of the movie are not the big names that they cast right. like they didn't stunt cast um like anna kendrick is like probably the best known of like the main main cast yeah. and even she's not somebody that's like a household name right. like there's people that know who she is 
and like the stuff that she's in, but like she's not yeah. Johnny Street. Depp or Meryl Streep or right. you know. And Meryl Streep had a pretty big role, but I mean she wasn't. There were just kind of like the main yeah. five. Yeah, basically, and she was like, if they had a main six, that would have been Meryl Streep probably, but she was like not really the main four or main five. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I liked it. Um, I enjoyed a lot of the humor that was in there. Yeah, I was, could see where you know, sure, it could have been. You know, they could have dirtied it up for an yeah. adult audience, or they yeah. could have, um, you know, gone one way or another with things. Um, I think the way they dealt with the the uh, wolf eating people alive and bringing them back, like that, was probably as far into like fantasy as the movie sure. went, um, and that they made very abstract and yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That was not my favorite part of the movie, but it was. It was what it was. Yeah, I mean, it was on, but it was over quickly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it worked. I mean, it was like it was it was a telling of it. Um, you know, in another direction, they could have gone with the adaptation, <clears throat> which you know, I say this, and then I think immediately, oh, but this would have spoiled the entire ending. Um, they could have framed it as his story, yeah, as the Baker's story, and so you have this sort of you know untrustworthy narrator fun fact in the uh, sorry i'm going to the stage music, but in the <laughs> stage musical there actually is a narrator standing off to the side wearing modern day clothes mm. telling the telling the story through act one and then in act two when the giant comes um the characters like break through the fourth wall see him and throw him to the giant <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Which would not have worked in the movie. No, that's yeah. fine. That makes me want to see the musical. Even. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, I like it when um, they can get two completely different experiences yeah. out of the same yeah. mm-hmm. material. Yeah. You know, when they can make a musical that works yeah. and a movie that works, and they're completely, you know, they stand on their own feet and, yeah. and work in their own way. So, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking about what you said about this was a good one for kids and for adults, and I mean, I think they're maybe like really little kids might get restless because it's so long or might get a little bit scared in a few parts. It's not super scary, but it's just, I'm talking like really little kids, but I think mm. overall, yeah, I mean, just like, it's pretty, definitely an all well, the things, things that you talk about where, you know, like you have to pay attention. Like there's so many people that die off screen, um, when they die that, you know, that will kind of go over a kid's head yeah. when mm-hmm. they're, when they're really small, they'll just be looking at what's in front of them. Um, or they'll be like, they know the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, and they'll be like, we we will have already known that Jack has been up the Beanstalk three times now because he's sung about it three times, and they'll be like, mommy, when is Jack going up the Beanstalk? Right. <laughs> but I, yeah, like I did say before, like I think there will be kids that will need to see it in two sittings. Yeah. You know, yeah. and definitely don't like the don't try. Sat, the kids who sat next to us probably should have been there in two sittings. Don't try and get them to like you know a six thirty show because they'll be broken. By the time it's over, you know, yeah. eight, eight o'clock will roll around and be like. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. anyway, that was Into the Woods. Hope you enjoy the way we do these reviews. If you do, please like the video, subscribe, check out all the written and video reviews at dalemaxfield.com, and thanks for watching. Thank you.